Hi, hello, and welcome to my channel. We're on the floor today because we're gonna be doing a little bit of a craft. I've been absolutely obsessed with watching TBR jar videos recently. I've watched hours upon hours of people pulling little pieces of paper out of jars. Basically what a TBR jar is, if you don't know, is people write down little prompts on pieces of paper. For example, we have things like a book with a yellow cover or a book with a number in the title. And you essentially pull your little prompt, go to your bookshelf and try to find a book that kind of fits that prompt. And most people pull around five to 10 or so. And that's kind of like books that they're kind of hoping to read in that month. And the idea of that just sounds so freaking fun. It kind of turns your TBR into a little bit of a game. So anyway, point being of this video, I'm gonna make a TBR jar. We're gonna make a TBR jar. I spent a good couple of hours scrolling through just like the internet in general. And then also when I'm actually watching the videos, if any of their prompts that they pull sound fun, then I've been writing them down. And I've basically collected a list a very, very long list of a little over a hundred different prompts. I printed them just because, I mean, a hundred plus prompts is a lot to write down. And I put them on green paper because our jar that we have is not your typical TBR jar jar. Typically when people have TBR jars, they literally put their prompts or their books or whatever in an actual jar. I have also seen like bowls and sometimes people use like little coffee mugs or something like that. But as an avid thrifter, I thought it would be most fitting and most fun for myself to use a thrifted glass container of some sort. I thrifted this like over a year ago and it's just kind of been sitting on a shelf looking pretty but very unused. And I'm really excited to finally have a use for this. Is this not like the cutest? frigging thing. And like I said, I thought it'd be really cute if I actually put like little green pieces of paper in it as well. Anyway, I feel like I've been talking for so long uh, and I'm very excited to get these prompts cut up. So let's go ahead and start our little project. There's not really going to be much to it. It's literally just me, you know, using this little like paper cutter thing to cut little strips and then folding them up. <laughs> I don't know if I should cut it like sideways first or if I should do strips and then I think maybe this way first. <laughs> I made two little columns on my document so that I could get like, you know, two even rows, but I should have like centered the words. That's gonna kind of bother me, but uh, whatever. <laughs> Our first cut. Now let's do the super tedious task of trying to <laughs> cut all these little strips out. I'm gonna actually try a little trick that I saw in someone else's video like a while back. <sighs> I'm like so out of breath for literally no reason. <laughs> Um, but they use their flashlight on their phone and they like put it underneath the paper and they could see where the edge of their cutter was so they knew like where to cut. So let's see if that works. Oh yeah, sweet. Okay. Works perfectly. <laughs> and also I'm thinking maybe I'll trim some of this like excess off the side because like the margins kind of a thing. We'll see. I'm gonna play around with it. At the end of the day, it's just like a fun little TBR jar so it's not that serious, but I get really crazy with my projects. <laughs> Most of the prompts that I ended up picking are kind of like the typical prompts. Uh, for example, things like a book with a pink cover, a book with less than 200 pages, a book with a female author, etc, etc. But I also have a small list of kind of like more fun, like active or more involved prompts that I put together. Things for example, like Sid, my cat, picks my book or going to the bookstore and picking out like a whole new book with one of the prompts. Significant other picks the book, that sort of thing. Like things that basically involve other people or going places, but there are significantly less of those ones. So I definitely want to kind of keep those ones separate so that I can make sure every month that I pick at least one of these like more active, more fun kind of prompts. with the folding, I just have to do the like special prompts. And we did have a little bit of an accident. <laughs> I didn't give myself enough space at the bottom of the paper. 
uh, to cut these ones. My fingers like wouldn't fit in the blade area. So I did have to write a couple of them out, which I mean, is really not a big deal at all. <laughs> uh, and I've decided to go ahead and just put them in with the rest of the prompts. I was gonna keep them separate, but I did make them a totally different color. So I'll just make sure that I pick one of these colors every time. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I have a knack for making things more complicated than they need to be. And I don't feel like a TBR jar is something that should be complicated. Also that little like light trick worked really well for um, the lighter color construction paper, but the other two colors were too dark. So uh, I had to just kind of wing it. <laughs> And so far, this has been a pretty fun little project. Very last one in our little TBR jar. I am so, so freaking excited. <laughs> I'm not gonna be filming a prompt video for this month because I've already planned all of my videos for April, but I am really excited about this jar and I do really want to at least pull one. So we're gonna go ahead and just actually pull one of them right now together. And I think it would be really fun to go to the library and use the prompt to pick a book from the library. So let's go ahead and pick a prompt. I'm gonna go with this one. And what does it say? This was actually one of the ones I was like hoping to pull sooner than later because it just seems really fun. Uh, so this one is random generated first letter in a title. So basically I'm gonna find a letter generator and then that letter will be the first letter in a title. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up a letter generator. And apparently I've already looked up generators before. <laughs> um, should we use that one? Let's do the wheel, a letter wheel, cause that sounds kind of fun. And we're gonna spin the button. It even has a sound effect. That sounds honestly kind of awful. I. The letter I. That might be a difficult one. We're going to the library and they're gonna have like a ton of options. So it probably won't be that bad, but I think I literally only have two books on my shelf that start with a Y, not Y. I'm definitely gonna try my best to find a book that starts with I, but I think I wanna do another spin just in case. I feel like this is kind of cheating, but a little like sneak peek to my next video. I'm currently reading my book cover books and they're getting me in a pretty severe reading slump. So if I can't find anything that actually sounds interesting that starts with I, I don't wanna force it. Let's do one more spin. That is a really terrible sound. <laughs> oh no, a W. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, okay, W. So I don't know if that's gonna be any easier. That could be good, like where, when, I have wayward. Let's see how many Ws I have on my shelf. Also, not a whole lot. I'm seeing one. I also don't have the greatest vision and my books are kind of far away, but I'm thinking only one, so. One more spin, one more spin. This is gonna be like a last ditch, desperate measures type of situation. Can we get a regular letter please? F, F, okay. We have our three options. We're gonna stick with that. I need to stop. <laughs> I'm gonna just pick 26 different letters. Okay, so I, first off, if we really can't find an I, then a W, and if really all else fails, we're gonna do an F. For my actual TBR picks, I'm not gonna be this lenient. We're gonna really try our best uh, to do like the first option or whatever. But again, because I'm already kind of like in a reading slump, I don't want, I don't want to get any further into it. Wonder if Riley Sager has any final girls, but that's last ditch effort. We're in the regular fiction section. very busy today. <laughs> I feel like fiction might be too broad of a, of a shelf to look through because I don't even know where to begin. There's a couple options over here. There's Ivy something or other. And then there's also this book, which is called Insomnia. And this seems like it might be kind of cool. Potentially. I have no idea what it's about though. Keep that one in mind.
Funny story, I live in the middle of nowhere, so literally every single time I've gone to the library, I think there's maybe been, maybe, three other people in the library. Yesterday, there were so many people. My library does like a lot of like book club things for kids or like crafts and things like that. And I think they were doing like an Easter one or something. So there was lots of kids, like right in the middle of the library, there was a table just full of children and their moms. I just kind of was like trying to be as stealthy as I could with my footage and not talk. So anyway, <laughs> so that was our little trip to the library. And I did get a bag full of books, but I am gonna start off with the book that I got for the prompt, which was so much harder than I thought it was gonna be. Like I thought it was gonna be kind of difficult to find a book that started with I, but I figured we were in a library. There was gonna be tons of books, but I also was having trouble finding W's and F's as well. So either way it went, uh, it was a difficult task, but it was fun. So anyway, the book that I ended up getting is called It Devours, and this is by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. If you saw my last video, I did read The House in the Cerulean Sea last month, and I freaking loved it. So uh, I've actually got like a cart going with Barnes and Noble, <laughs> and I did add two more of TJ Klune's books to it, and Barnes and Noble basically recommended this book after I added those books. So I'm assuming it's kind of got like the same type of vibe. And from what I remember it saying, I think these two people have a podcast and this book is like a book version of their podcast or something like that. I'll read the inside cover so we can actually figure it out. I don't know why I keep guessing when it's literally written right in front of me. <laughs> Welcome to Night Vale, a friendly desert community somewhere in the American Southwest where ghosts, angels, aliens, and government conspiracies are part of everyday life. Ooh, this person's name is different. <laughs> is an outsider to the town of Night Vale. Working for Carlos, the town's top scientist, she relies on fact and logic as her guiding principles. But all of that is put into question when Carlos gives her a special assignment investigating a mysterious rumbling in the desert wasteland outside of town. This investigation leads her to the joyous congregation of the smiling God and to Daryl, one of its most committed members. Caught between her beliefs in the ultimate power of science and her growing attraction to Daryl, she begins to suspect the congregation is planning a ritual that could threaten the lives of everyone in town. Totally not what I was expecting, but <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know if I'm actually gonna fully finish this book this month or in the next two weeks rather because I did check it out from the library, but I'm kind of using this as an opportunity to try out the book, like read a little bit of it first before I buy it. But anyway, I also got three other books that I thought could be interesting. The first one is The Sea Witch by Katie Robert. This is the fifth book in the Wicked Villains series. And this is basically a series of like super spicy Disney retellings. It's kind of funny because like the first one really had absolutely nothing to do, even though it had like the names Jafar and Jasmine, it had absolutely nothing to do with Aladdin as like a movie, <laughs> which was a little disappointing, but also, like I said, these are super, super spicy, like kind of cringy spicy, at least the other one was, the one that I've read. And if you saw my reading wrap up for January, which was the very first video that I uploaded on this channel, I did end up giving it a two star rating because I didn't really particularly like it. And when I got done reading that first one, I wasn't planning on reading any more of these books because again, it just wasn't my preference, but I decided to pick this one up on a whim for some reason. <laughs> We're giving it another shot. Once upon a time, I met a man and he stole my heart. In my desperation to reunite with him, I have nowhere to turn but the sea witch. Ursa, which is another thing that I noticed when reading the back of the books, uh, like for Desperate Measures, she did, the author did actually use Jafar and Jasmine as the names, but in a lot of the other ones, she like takes a letter or two away from the names, but you can tell obviously who she's trying to reference. And I just thought it was kind of like a weird, kind of funny choice to make, but. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so it says, Ursa is as beautiful as she is dangerous, and the one person my father warned me never to trust, but she's all crimson lips and sweet lies that hint at deeper truths beneath the surface, and I'm convinced despite my fear. It's a simple enough plan, if not for the faint of heart, an auction to sell the one thing I possess of any value, myself. The money will free Alaric, is that supposed to be Eric? <laughs> and then we can finally be together. So that's that. Next up I have Nettle and Bone, and this is by T. Kingfisher. I love the artwork in the front. This like a skeleton animal. Looks like maybe a dog or something. What does the back look like? The back of the book has a similar kind of vibe with like spooky trees and stuff, but it's got a little image of a girl in the back. After reading The Cerulean Sea and Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, I went on YouTube and I searched and watched a few like cozy fantasy recommendation videos. And this book was actually mentioned in a couple of different videos. So I thought I would give it a shot. And this is basically about a girl who is trying to rescue her sister. And she has to do like three impossible tasks, which are build a dog of bones. So that's where our little bone animal comes from. <laughs> 
sew a cloak of nettles, which the girl in the back definitely looks like she's wearing some kind of like raggedy looking cloak. So it makes sense that it's made of nettles, like a plant. Um, and then capture moonlight in a jar. It does sound a little darker than the cozy fantasy vibes that I think I'm kind of looking for, but I think it'll be a fun read. So, and it's really quick. That was another thing that I kind of wanted to make sure that I got. I do have a very full plate already this month because I've already planned all the videos. So all the books that I got are pretty thin. So if I do want to read them, I can just kind of read them really quick. And then the very last book that I have, I got very much just on a whim because I thought the cover was really cute. <laughs> but this one is called Cat Out of Hell by Lynn Truss. And this is what the cover looks like. How adorable is that? <laughs> For people who both love and hate cats comes the tale of Alec Charlesworth, a librarian who finds himself suddenly alone. He's lost his job and his beloved wife has just died. Overcome by grief, he searches for clues about her disappearance in a file of interviews between a man called Wiggy and a cat named Roger who speaks. And that's literally all I read to know that I wanted to grab this because a cat that can talk sounds like a blast to me. Anyway, that is my little library book haul and definitely make sure to stay tuned for our very first TBR jar picks, my like May readings, which will be uploaded within the first week of May. I'm not sure exactly what day yet, but within that first week. But anyway, this was like a super fun, just kind of like chill video to film. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have slash have had the most amazing of days and I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. Bye.